the bunkers. Uh, this conversation back and forth between myself and the Globe Earth Believer on Twitter has uh, raised the issue of time zones. And it's often an argument that you'll hear from Globe Earth proponents that uh, time zones prove the Earth is a globe and it's only possible on a globe. And uh, I've tried to explain to this person here that time zones are uh, an artificial construct and uh, one of the ways that you can tell uh, that uh, uh, time zones don't really prove anything is that uh, the sun is rarely at its meridian at midday in any given location. So uh, what's actually happened is time zones are just a way to standardize time. Uh, of course, it, it's helpful, it's useful in navigation, and uh, when we look at a time zone map like this, uh, it's obviously very helpful for all sorts of things, navigation, communication. We need something standard. And uh, so this is what has been put together. Uh, so what I want to do is, is go through um, uh, the, the way this is explained and look at it from you know, a flat earth perspective uh, and consider the points made. So this, this just uh, shows you how to, to use this map. Uh, maybe it's uh, worth me bringing up uh, uh, a map that I just created uh, by... Um, I, I, pulled a, I pulled a time zone map off the web and then uh, what you can do uh, is that you can uh, base it on polar coordinates. You just convert it into polar coordinates. In this case, uh, it's uh, the, the polar coordinate is at the South Pole. Uh, so you can see here uh, how the time zones have converted if our azimuth point is at the South Pole. This is another point that I try to bring up often is that, or against an argument that's often used is because uh, we're very used to seeing this uh, flat earth map that looks uh, something more like this. Uh, this again has the time zones on it, but this is based on the North Pole. And of course, this is pretty much the same as a, a top down view of, of a globe projection, but just spread out. And of course, as you spread it out, those, those time zones get wider. Uh, and so do uh, the land masses. Uh, but uh, you've got to remember that this is an azimuth projection. Now, usually an azimuth projection would be wherever you are located on the Earth. So if I was in um, you know, somewhere in South Africa, Africa, for example, I would put my azimuth in South Africa and everything would be spread out around me. And of course, it would appear to diverge as it went out because I'm just I'm using a projection. So uh, you know, th there are no ways to really show which projection is the right one. And there are infinite possible projections because it just depends where you are on the Earth and that will be your azimuth. So what happens is, is it makes sense to standardize time for communication, for navigation. And so how do you do that? Well, you have to pick an azimuth point. And uh, the North Pole has the, the meridian going through it, uh, through the UK, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. That's where it, you know, you have that's this start point. Of course, this is all constructed in the imaginations of humans. Uh, there is no start or end point, whether you consider it a sphere or a, a disk or something infinite that goes way beyond this. Uh, in order to make a projection, especially when it comes to time zones, then you need a, a start and an end point. So, uh, just to show there um, how you can you can you can make any projection you like, and the land masses will distort, but it, they don't automatically distort in real life. Yeah. So uh, I'm not necessarily an advocate of this uh, commonly seen flat Earth map with. Uh, this azimuth on the North Pole. Again, it's just a standardized projection. 
and uh, it works to a certain extent when it comes to trying to justify the flat earth with a map because uh, it's it's based on the same time uh, or azimuth as as the globe with the north pole at least and uh, you know when you consider the south pole it's just another azimuth point uh, that's an equal distance away from the North Pole as, as the equator. And so uh, that's just a, a mathematical construct. It's just imaginary. But, uh, you know, any, any, is, uh, any projection is possible. So that's, uh, that's just to show you that. And uh, let's go back to this. and look at the explanation. So as I said, uh, solar noon is when the uh, sun is at its zenith. Uh, if you're on the equator like me, then it's going to be right above you, and that's pretty much midday. Uh, but the, the time that the sun is at its zenith in any given location is never the same. So uh, solar noon is the moment when the sun passes a, lo a location's meridian and reaches its highest position in the sky. In most cases, it doesn't happen at 12 o'clock. <coughs> so this straightaway tells us that uh, this time zone construct that we've got, whether it's for a globe or a level Earth or whatever kind of Earth, it doesn't truly represent where the sun actually is. It's divided up into 12 and 24 hours, and these different time zones give you uh, a nice uniform circle to play with. Hence, you end up with your 360 degrees, and that's, of course, the shape of uh, your average clock. So let's go through this. Uh, as I said, from the perspective of someone that doesn't necessarily take everything that's being said here at face value, but understands that it is talking about the, the common model that is used, and that of course is a globe. So what is noon? The English language is a little imprecise when it comes to the word noon. It can mean two different things. One, in terms of civil time, noon is simply another word for 12 o'clock, the moment separating morning and afternoon. As such, it is the opposite of midnight. Alternative names include midday and noontime. And the second definition or meaning is uh, in terms of solar time. Noon is the moment when the sun crosses the local meridian and reaches its highest position in the sky, except at the poles. This version of noon is also called solar noon or high noon. So just to be clear there, uh, solar noon is when the sun is above you or, or on your meridian if, if you're further north but it won't necessarily be 12 o'clock or midday it, it could be something like one o'clock or, or you know 11 45 whatever it, it varies so meridians and the sun a meridian is an imaginary line running from the north pole to the south pole along the earth's surface okay remember we said that the north and south pole are just arbitrary points uh, okay, we can talk about the North Pole as being below Polaris, and uh, then you can work out everything from there. Uh, but uh, that goes off on another tangent. Let's stick to the point here. So a meridian is an imaginary line running from the North Pole to the South Pole along the Earth's surface. It connects all locations that share the same longitude. So longitude is what's really used for time and this of course came later on in the development of maps and navigation longitude uh, really helped establish uh, a way to navigate more precisely uh, because then you've got this uh, almanac of time zones and you can talk about different times in different locations meaning that they are exactly north or south of each other the line running from one pole to the other via your location is your local meridian so again your meridian, your solar noon, is when the sun is at your meridian, wherever you are. Uh, if you're, you know, a, an hour's drive east or west, then um, it's, it's different. Solar noon happens at your location when the Earth's rotation 
brings your local meridian to the side of the planet that faces the sun. Now, of course, this is understood as being uh, an explanation that for a lot of people is proof enough that we live on a globe. The fact that we have day and night. And uh, for a lot of people, it's understandable that it's very difficult to break away from that concept that uh, the only way you can have day and night on on an Earth is, is, is because it's spinning. But if you go back and think about how the heliocentric model was first constructed, it wasn't done with any discovery of curvature. No curvature has ever been measured. It's always been based on looking up at the sun. So we have this heliocentric model with the sun at the center. So uh, this is just like a calendar. Um, you could have a lunar calendar and you could, if you wanted, put the moon at the center. Uh, now, as, as a central uh, element for a calendar, it's fine. It works very well as well as the sun, but it doesn't dictate the shape or any alleged movement of the Earth. So you have this decision to have the sun at the center of your calendar or model, your heliocentric uh, solar calendar model. And, well, the only way that you can then illustrate or envisage or justify day and night on the Earth is to assume, which is what Copernicus did, Copernicus did assume that the Earth is another planet and that it is... Uh, rotating in order to give you night and day. So this this concept of, of the spinning globe being responsible for night and day is just that. It's just a concept. It's just a necessary requirement of the heliocentric model. When of course you can consider it as geocentric and you still get the same results. Uh, again it doesn't dictate where the earth is, uh, how everything really works, uh, the, the physics behind it and all of that. All we know is that there is a, a way of telling the time by observing the sun, the moon and stars and our location on the earth as well, providing that we can tell the time in a standardized format. And so that's what we're dealing with. We are dealing with essentially how to illustrate the passage of time and so you need a start and a stop point you need this kind of top or a bottom the poles the north and the south poles these are all elements that have to be artificially added to the model to actually define a way of telling the time for us as i said it, it works out as 360 degrees so that gives you the t the minutes and the seconds to play with it all divides up nice and sweetly but of course we know that at the same time the the, the length of a day is is never the same anywhere and of course that's uh, passed off as tilt and other things but let's move on i'm just uh going off when we come upon these assumptions that are related to the global heliocentric model and how they are just that they are just assumptions it doesn't mean that that it all necessarily works that way. So, solar noon happens at your location when the Earth's rotation, that's as far as I got just now, brings your local meridian to the side of the planet that faces the Sun. From your perspective, the Sun, after having steadily gained altitude since sunrise, now reaches the top of the arc that its journey describes in the sky every day. Again, this the way the Sun appears to arc, especially if you're north of the equator you can see this in in for example the uk in england you do get it, it comes up over there in the east uh or towards the you know towards the the south east comes up and and it kind of arcs um, it never reaches above our heads because um again you can just imagine it doing a circle whether it's going around the north pole or it's going around the south pole or doing something else is arbitrary and you could argue that until the cows come home. But we see this arc, and that's simply because of perspective. It, it comes from far away, from the horizon, and as it gets closer to us on its circle, then of course it will appear to be higher in the sky. But this is just maintaining a, a consistent level 
above the earth but from as this uh, explanation says here from our personal perspective we will see the sun arc across the sky as it uh, completes part of its circle and gets close to us this is just that's how perspective works so from your perspective the sun after having steadily gained altitude since sunrise now reaches the top of the arc and uh, that its journey describes in the sky every day at this moment it appears to it appears due south due north or in the zenith position exactly above you depending on your latitude and the time of year so yeah of course the, okay the longitude is is that line that 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 line if you're you know if you're south of england for example then you're on the same uh longitude line but the latitude is basically how far away are you from the north pole uh, so to more towards the equator so the further of course the further you are away from the north pole the higher in the sky the sun is going to be uh, appear to be simply because you're getting closer to it go up north and you're getting further away from the sun and it will appear lower in the sky that's again just how perspective works and uh, this is easily testable and observable anywhere that's just how we see the world so at this moment it appears juice uh, okay right since solar time depends on the longitude solar noon occurs at exactly the same moment in all locations that share your local meridian so again if you've got that line uh, we can you just remember the the image of the North Pole with the boop. so what if you're on the same line then uh, you will see the Sun at the same time because you are in the same time zone yeah in fact let's just flick back to that and we'll see so as a, you know you're you're in the UK and then you're you've got the same time zone as here down uh, in Africa here at Greenland South America okay so that's your your longitude lines basically your time zones your longitude lines So, when is solar noon? In most places on the Earth, solar noon does not happen at 12 o'clock. The Earth's rotation slowly shifts the meridian, experiencing solar noon from east to west. In other words, solar noon happens a little earlier in locations just east of you and a little later in locations west of you. Uh, again because you've had that start and stop point which is the meridian for for example uh, Greenwich Mean Time then anywhere east or west of that is going to put things out of sync since our clocks are set according to time zones civil time changes abruptly as you move from one time zone to another so this again is an indication that we're talking about something that's an artificial construct you crossing the international date line doesn't make anything happen whatsoever <laughs> it just uh, it, it just it's just uh, in our minds that we've jumped either forwards or backwards a day or a few hours uh, this is just uh, doesn't make any difference to what's actually going on in the sky what whatsoever these are just imaginary lines it's really important to understand that a lot of the time when people are talking about the globe and especially time zones and, and all these things tilt and spin and what da, 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 it's all conceptual it's all uh, these necessities of the heliocentric model that have to be put together explanation upon explanation rather than anything that's ever been measured as any uh, fact it's just an explanation for a concept it's not not reality in reality time time the passage of the Sun or, or the moon or, or anything isn't broken up into minutes or seconds you, and you can you can break it down to fractions of a second but that that's not what time is time is one continuous now it's not broken up into anything it just it's just a smooth flow so it's only us humans that that create these that like to split things up you know break them down into parts that we can manage and and tell the time with again there's nothing wrong with doing that it helps uh, for everything we do on this earth but uh, it doesn't prove the shape or the dimensions of the earth and it certainly doesn't prove where we are in the universe uh, so right 
Um, so it does not reflect the e. Uh, so while this uh, undeniably makes it makes life easier for us, uh, it does not reflect the even movement of the Earth's rotation and the gradual geographical progression of local solar time. Okay, we well just talk you know, in, in, instead of the Earth's rotation, replace that with the Sun's rotation. There is no way that you can say the Earth is moving. Again, that's just a necessity. It's a calculation. Okay, if we have a day that lasts 24 hours, we have to break it down. We have to calculate and assume that in this model, uh, the Earth is traveling at a certain speed and it's rotating at a certain speed. And all this can be modeled, no problem. You can, and you can make these calculations based on the fact that you've, you've decided on this time cons construct. And you can break it down into seconds and, and what have you. But it doesn't mean that the Earth is moving. It's just an assumption for the model. You look at the sun and you can see that it's the sun that's moving. So is the, the moon. There's nothing, there's nothing that would tell us that the Earth is moving, nothing at all. And there's nothing that would tell us that the Earth is curving or spherical, nothing at all. All we have are these projections that are just illustrations of the passage of time. And, uh, well, um, if, if you decide that the Sun is stationary in your model, then, okay, you have to have a moving Earth. But if you decide in your model that the Earth is stationary as it appears to be in reality, then obviously it's the Sun that moves. And the way we see the sun set with the changing in altitude as it comes up is exactly how we see anything else moving towards us or away from us in the sky. So it makes sense for all practical purposes that we're on a stationary and level earth, apart from the mountains and the hills and everything else that goes on on the earth, which is, of course, what actually gives us the sunsets. So the sun can set uh, quite easily uh, you can see it yourself. You might see a hill in front of you or a mountain or even a house. And you watch the sun go away from you and eventually the, the mountain or the hill or the house will block off the sun. And you will be in shade and it's night time. Yeah? Uh, and so, okay, you want to argue about the distance or the height from the sun? It doesn't really matter, but that's what's actually happening. You can see this in reality. Uh, and, of course, in in the real world, not without models, then you have air around us that is very dense, you've got clouds and, and what have you, and there's also a limit to the distance that light can travel. Again, it's always assumed with the heliocentric model that uh, light uh, can travel for infinite distances. It's already traveled 93 million miles. All of this is just for the model, but uh, and it's, uh, it's explanations. It doesn't hold any uh, factual uh, consensus in it it's just explanations so and we look at light around us and we know that there is a limit to the distance that light will travel yeah you can see a light a long way away but you might not necessarily be bathed in that light but uh, after a while that 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 light in the distance will be obscured by things other things on the ground or the dense air just above the ground or even the clouds yeah when the sun goes behind the clouds, you can't see it anymore. When that's happening uh, 100 miles away or, or 1,000 or 3,000 miles away from you or even 6,000 miles away from you, then, of course, uh, all that air and clouds and everything else that's on the surface or above the surface, all that distance away will be invisible to you. But it will still be there and it will still block the sun. <laughs> yeah? So... Where were we? This means that clocks in the eastern part of each time zone show an earlier time at solar noon than clocks near its western border. Even if time zones were used the way they were once envisioned, where local time is based on the solar time in the zone's center, with the time zone extending 7.5 degrees of longitude to the west and to the east of the center line, solar noon would occur at 11.30, a.m. at the eastern time zone border and at 12.30 or 12.30 p.m. at the western border. So, okay, what that's basically saying is, of course, you can, if you want to, uh, uh, you know, decide that wherever you are, uh, you're in Timbuktu and the 
sun is at its zenith, that moment that the sun is at its zenith is, is your midday. But of course, that means that it will constantly change day by day because the sun is doing these concentric circles and it's uh, getting closer or further away uh, to the pole, then every single day has a different t noon. Yeah? Or every, and, and every single location. So, of course, that will just quickly get wildly out of control if you try to keep track of that. It's a lot easier to just decide on these time zones and a central uh, location or a central meridian, GMT. So let's carry on here. Latest solar noon in China. In real life, the difference is even larger because time zones rarely follow this ideal. Their borders are often grossly distorted by political or geographical factors. For example, China spans more than 60 degrees of longitude, but the country follows a single time zone. This means that solar noon in western areas occurs later than uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, during some parts of the year later than anywhere else on the earth so there you go it's a good example of how everything can be thrown out of whack from this uh, or it just doesn't you know this artificial construct doesn't really correlate with what's actually going on in the sky it's just been standardized uh, elastic solar time of course if you happen to live in a location whose solar time is used as the basis for civil time in your time zone solar noon will happen at or around 12 o'clock for you but even that is only true during some parts of the year the earth's rotation or again the the sun's uh, rotation above a level earth doing its concentric circles to give you the seasons throughout the year consider it like that when you see this earth rotation and its movements in relation to the sun are not quite constant. So the length of a solar day, which is the time span from one solar noon to the next, varies during the course of a year. This phenomenon is referred to as the equation of time. I'll just carry on reading and then maybe explain it. For example, around the December solstice, solar noons are a bit farther apart. So the sun crosses the local meridian a little later every day. During other parts of the year, for example, in the time following the June solstice, solar noon appears happens a little earlier each day and solar days are a little shorter. So we, we all know if you're north of the equator that uh, you know that the, the days get longer and shorter throughout the year and in the in the winter time the, the days are very short and they get increasingly shorter. So uh, this again is just easily explained. It's not necessarily provable because no one can have this. No one has the ability to actually prove what's really going on, but it can easily be explained as uh, the sun light doing these concentric circles. Um, so, uh, and it, you know, the sun being closer or further away uh, would uh, give us. The difference in temperatures and the different seasons. Solar noon at the poles. All meridians converge at the North Pole and the South Pole. Again, the meridians are artificial. So are the North and South Poles. They're just points on the map that are an equal distance apart. So, unlike any other location on Earth, the poles don't have a longitude by extension. There is no solar noon because there is no meridian. The sun can cross. Yeah, I think you can easily envisage that. In practice, the sun does not go up and down on a daily basis like everywhere else uh, on Earth. Rather, its altitude in the sky constantly increases during the winter and spring and decreases during the summer and autumn, creating six months of polar night followed by six months of midnight sun. At the North Pole, for example, the sun reaches its lowest altitude at the December solstice, which marks the beginning of winter there, and its highest position at the June solstice, when the summer starts. Okay, so again, the, the idea that you can get these extended days of uh, constant sun uh, is used as this uh, proof that we live on a globe, because the globe is said to be tilting uh, throughout the year, and, and it's just... Uh, but again, it's easily explainable or easy enough to, to perceive or conceive 
in in a myriad of other ways. So again, I'm not going to produce or present a model that I would say uh, is is a fact or is a replacement for the globe. Uh, got, got to understand here that the globe is just a projection and a projection of time, uh, and you can come up with all sorts of projections. And as you've seen, you know there is a projection of the uh, that's similar to the the North um, Pole projection uh, that kind of works um, to an extent but uh, that's not necessarily reality because as I said this diverging of these timelines and the and the land masses is not what actually happens in reality it's just a projection okay so uh, a bit of a bit of a history lesson here where does the word noon come from its origin lies in the Latin word nun referring to the ninth hour after daybreak Originally, it was used to denote the timing of a daily prayer or meal at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, nine hours after six in the morning. In the 12th century, the prayer and meal were shifted to midday, uh, while the term, what's that, no, no, non, uh, remained the same, inspiring the uh, use and timing of today's noon. Okay, so there you go. Uh, let's just I was just gonna have a look at this um, just uh, this is just a a map of where the Sun is at this time that I'm recording uh, or maybe about uh, 10 minutes before I started recording this you can see for, I'm, I'm it's the evening for me now I'm here in Thailand and that's where the Sun is at the moment um, and we can see here that uh, just you know in this reference to solar noon uh, you can see here, for example, these locations down here where the sun is uh, near its zenith. Uh, we have these locations and it's uh, 11.46. It's not quite quite noon in these different locations. So just to just to illustrate the fact that uh, uh, um, uh, different locations are going to experience solar noon at different times on, on this world clock. But this is interesting as well. Position of the sun, subsolar point. Uh, so on Wednesday, 24th of November, that's that's now, that's this time I'm looking at this now. The ground speed is currently 434 uh, meters per second. So we're talking about the speed of the sun. All right. Uh, now it's interesting. It's actually now talking about the sun being the body that's moving, not the earth. Okay. Uh, so the ground speed of the sun is 434 meters per second or 1,562.7 kilometers an hour, which is 971 miles per hour, or 843.6 nautical miles per hour. The table below shows position of the sun compared to uh, the time and date above. So uh, you just, okay, that's, again, that's, the, the sun is supposed to be, over, is over uh, South, Af uh, South America at the moment. And uh, this is showing us these, uh, you know, distances from it. Uh, yeah. So uh, nautical miles is another one that we, you know, is is uh, interesting to get into because the reason nautical miles is used for navigation is because uh, nautical miles can be easily divided up into these 360 degrees. Again, all these projections rely on time and using 360 degrees so okay when it comes to using miles it go or kilometers it goes all over the place but it's the nautical miles that correlate with degrees and uh, the timekeeping and that's why they are used so uh, again you can you, and you can work out the for example in celestial uh, navigation uh, now if you talk about the sun for example let's say you you've got your you're in a boat somewhere or in the sea there and you've got your almanac and you know that you're looking at the sun and you see that it's a, it's a certain number of degrees above your horizon and you know that it's uh, midday or solar noon uh, the sun is at its zenith in, in this part or in this location over here so then you you then you're converting nautical uh, your angle into nautical miles so uh, one degree is the same as I think I'm right in saying it's 60 miles okay so um, I might be wrong there I, if I'm, my memory might be failing me but the correlation there is between degrees the degrees there's 360 degrees or 180 degrees 
in on all in all these calculations, and uh, each degree is related to sixty nautical miles or or thereabouts, and so you can split up your uh, you can sit then you can then say that a certain distance you can say sixty nautical miles is part of your imaginary uh, great circle, yeah. So these are just di distances that are um, imagineered and imagined to join up as a circle using nautical miles uh, when you know in relation to degrees. That's something I'm going to make a presentation on at another time. So yeah, it doesn't matter what projection you use. Uh, this is this is just how it works. We know from thousands of years of record keeping where the sun is going to be at its zenith at any given time or location and you can uh, and based on the angles you can then work out where you are if you know the time and uh, that's that's why having longitudes and time zones is very integral to to uh, navigation but it doesn't dictate the shape of the earth all right so hopefully that has helped uh, um, explain a few things uh, and it's just uh, you know what you have to understand is that no one is going to be able to come up with a projection that is a proof or a map that is a proof of the true shape and dimensions of the earth but what is obvious is that we are on a level stationary earth uh, this is clear for anyone to see and we observe the in perspective governs every observation that we make and so the sun and the moon doing its thing however they work whatever forces are involved we are not privy to that it's like asking someone to tell you how uh, a, you know a, a car works if you've never seen under the bonnet and you don't know what kind of engine it could be a battery it could be petrol it could be diesel it could be plasma it could be whatever you know, you're never going to know what how a car is power, being powered, really, just by looking from the outside. Hmm? Yeah, it's uh, just it's just an analogy, really, to think about when it comes to the sun and how it works. What's holding it up there? Anyone can we can have all sorts of explanations, but no one's got anything that can really prove anything. And that's the thing, isn't it? Because once you have authority figures saying this is how it is we're living on a spinning globe because this that and the other uh, not because we discovered any curvature but just because we wanted to keep time and uh, navigate uh, and this is how we we perceive it as a globe uh, but no one ever navigates from north to south and then back up north again do they doesn't happen you can go around in circles east to west as much as you like but um, uh, yeah there you go. I hope that helps explain a few things and uh, looking forward to seeing what you think about that. Thank you very much.